you can manipulate or get more information on the data that you're working with in your code using something known as methods and properties. In this video, we'll be covering methods and properties for strings, which will allow us to manipulate or get more information on those strings. We're going to start off with methods. The first method is the to uppercase method. This method is very simple and it does exactly what the name describes. It converts all the characters in a string to uppercase characters. Let's take a look at this method in our code. I'm going to create a variable called message and I'm going to set it to a string of hello world. If I console log it, I'll get hello world just as I typed it out. But what if I wanted to change all the characters inside of the string to uppercase characters? Well, inside the console log statement, we can add a method to our message variable. And the way we can use a method is by adding onto the variable name dot to uppercase. And make sure you add these parentheses at the end because that's what tells JavaScript to execute this method. If we now save our file, we'll see hello world in all uppercase characters. The second method is the to lowercase method. This method does the exact opposite of to uppercase and converts all the characters in a string to lowercase characters. Using the same example, let's call the to lowercase method onto our message variable. If we save our file, we'll see it returns hello world, but this time it's all in lowercase characters. Another method we'll look at is the starts with method. It is used to check if a string starts with a specific set of characters. If it does, it returns true, and if it doesn't, it returns false. Let's console log our message variable and add the method to it by saying dot starts with. And the different thing about this method is that it will take in a value in the parentheses this time. This value is going to be a string which will be used to check if the message variable starts with it. So in our case, we can pass in hello. Now, if the string does start with the value that we passed in, we'll get true. And if not, we'll get false. Of course, in this case, we'll get true because the message variable does indeed start with hello. But what if we change it to, let's say, world? We'll get false this time because the message does not start with world. The next method is the ends with method, and it's pretty much the same as the starts with method that we just looked at. The only difference is that it checks if the string ends with a specific set of characters. For example, if we console log the variable message and use the ends with method, and let's say we pass in world, we'll get true because the string does indeed end with world. But if we pass in anything else, we'll get false. The next method is the replace method. This is used to replace a specific set of characters in a string with another set of characters. Continuing with our usual code, I'll add a replace method to this variable. Now this method will require two values to be passed in this time. The first value is going to be the characters that you want to replace. And the second value is going to be what you want to replace it with. In this case, let's say we want to replace world with JavaScript. So inside the replace method, let's first pass in world, which is the part of the string that we want to replace. And then we can pass in what we want to replace it with, which is going to be JavaScript. If we save our file, we'll see hello JavaScript in the console instead of hello world. The last method we'll look at is the includes method, which is used to check if a string contains a specific set of characters. For example, if we use the includes method onto this variable, and let's say we pass in world, it will return true because world does exist inside this variable. However, if I write some random characters and save it, we'll get false because this does not exist inside of this. Now we're going to be taking a look at a property. This is different from a method because if you remember, in methods we used parentheses and sometimes even passed in values. You can't do that for properties. Properties are usually just read-only values. We're going to take a look at a string property called length. This property gives us the number of characters inside a string. It's really simple to use. We still have our message variable, which says hello world. So let's console log message. And in order to use the length property, you add a dot length to it and save it. We'll get 11 in the console, which is the total number of characters inside of this string. 
Now it's important to note there are a bunch of other string methods that you can use in JavaScript. The ones that I covered are just one of the most common ones and the ones you'll probably use if you're a beginner. 